Thousands of children go missing every year in the U.S., and many of them never make it back home. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in Virginia is handling more than 700 cases of John and Jane Doe's. Forensic imaging specialist showed me how they put a face on an unidentified child, starting only with skeletal remains. Close your eyes and see every single face that we've seen, that we worked on. The process of facial reconstruction is a, that comes with a huge emotional impact as does most of the things that we do here. Forensic imaging specialists at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children spend countless hours bringing life back to skeletal remains. So I'd come back for lunch and be a FedEx box sitting on my desk and it's one of those like, oh. Inside the box, a skull. A horrible aspect to the to the job. Mullen says facial reconstruction is a collaborative effort between art and science. First, a forensic anthropologist examines the skull. Everything about you in your face is etched into your skull. Everything from the projection of your nose, the width of your nose, the placement of your eyelids, how the fold goes, goes over your eyelids, your eyebrows, your hairline. Including ethnicity, gender, and age. The forensic anthropologist then relays that information to the forensic artist and reconstruction begins. That relationship has to be a good one to come up with that an accurate image. That's why you have no artistic license. You've got to stick with what that assessment that that forensic anthropologist has given you to come up with the correct face to put on those on that skull. Years ago, the forensic imaging specialist would apply glue to the skull and physically sculpt clay onto the surface of the skull, creating busts like these, taking well over a week to create. Today, the images are done digitally. It speeds the process up, cuts the time in half, and you could probably finish one in a matter of, you know, two or three days. This is from a CT scan, just a traditional CT scan as you find at a wow. hospital. Tissue still remains on this young boy found in North Carolina. Based on that information that the anthropologist given you, mm -hmm. based on your, your age range and ancestry, this will tell you how thick the tissue is on these landmarks on the actual skull. One characteristic a skull will not reveal is skin tone or eye color. That's why most reconstructions are in black and white. It's a constant going back and forth and making sure you've got that right face put back on there. I stop when I see somebody staring back at me. Program manager for long-term missing children Mike Murphy says a skull can tell about injuries acting as a roadmap. Do you find it's pretty accurate? We find that those imaging, uh, those actual images are accurate to the point that they will honestly give you chills. Once we finish the 3D facial reconstruction, we do uh, five images, right to left profile and three steps in between. The center then targets the area where the body was found, working closely with law enforcement. Just because a body is found in North Carolina doesn't mean they're from North Carolina. Hundreds have been ID'd and several hundred are probably still waiting for confirmation. So mm -hmm. we're going to keep doing them and doing them until there are no more out there. No case is ever closed. We never stop looking, ever. Hoping to find answers for parents. And I can tell you that every single moment of every single day, they're looking, always looking. And being able to provide them with some answers and some resolution can hopefully give them a little bit of peace. And once the facial reconstruction is complete, the image is posted on the center's website, along with pictures of any artifacts and clothing that was associated with the child when he or she was found. We have a link to the center's website, along with images of unidentified children found right here in our area on WNCN.com.